Well, while this keyboard here continues to test in the background, let me see if I can move this LED a little further back out of the way so it's not quite as distracting. I want to look at my FR300, my Heiko desoldering station here. Uh, a video or two or three back, the tip stopped heating. Just boom, didn't heat anymore. Uh, and I'm assuming the heating element has failed. I got online to order a replacement heating element. And it was $57 plus shipping. And I kind of went, okay, I'm going to verify that it's the heating element and not the control PCB that's broken. Oh, sorry about the loud noise. So, uh, I guess we take it apart and see what we've got. So, let's do that. I have no idea which screws need to come out and which don't. That's a nice machine screw with a lock washer. I'm guessing this will be the same. And that seems to have loosened that collar. That's where the spring lives. Okay, all of that makes sense to me. Uh, I'm going to have to get something here to start collecting parts in. Or I will lose them. here. So that's just the spring collar. Uh, oh, that screw was already loose. Those feel like they're machine screws again. Okay, they're not super tight. I'm guessing the case will have to be opened up to actually get this fully apart. three of them dropped out yep they're machine screws again so very nice they're not just you know cheap self tappers turning into plastic which makes me believe there's probably brass inserts in behind those it would make sense because we do get a lot of strain on there so I can see that the the shell is gonna have to come apart it looks like at this point let me take the back cover off the capture cartridge for the a uh, solder was removed previously. I don't know that this screwdriver is going to be sufficient. Well, it was for that one. That certainly, let's see, it felt like a self tapper, and it was. I'm surprised down here on the handle that these are self tappers. That's really not the right screwdriver for those. <clears throat> So my assumption here is that if there's continuity through the heating element, then it's probably the control electronics that have failed. And if the if there isn't continuity, then the assumption is the heating element is open and that's what's failed. So it'll be most likely one or the other. I've never actually had it open before. I do know from the photos I've seen, okay, that rubber seal needs to come off. That spring needs to be captured. Oh, <laughs> do I have any clue how that was put together? And the spring lived in here. I do believe if it pulls back there it is and then I can push it and release it I know what this piece is it goes up here so we can take all of this out just so we don't lose it but that does release the heating element oh I would say that has failed. Would you not agree? When <laughs> I 
when the connections to it have all broken off. So two. Of, so it looks like there's two that are probably the thermistor and two that are the power. All of those have uh, broken off, and I don't think I caused it. Uh, I think it just broke. You know, this is probably the true failure right here. That has fractured off from here. That is delaminated off. I'm guessing that is the failure. Uh, so I suspect we'll still see continuity, or at least resistance. I'm not sure what the resistance should be. I don't think I caused that when I was pulling on it. Can I do this? Yeah, that is a metal coating onto ceramic. So it's maybe really difficult to get. How about what I believe to be the thermistor? But I, I, that heating element has obviously failed. Uh, I can potentially... The thing of it is, is without the thermostat, or the thermostat, the, the, the thermocouple, that I'm sure is on those two center wires, I don't expect this to be able to operate. It, it's not going to know what to do. So I'm going to assume at this point that the issue is in the heating element. I mean, it's obviously at this point shot. So, an order of replacement. Uh, and we'll go from there. So, I've never actually gotten a look inside before. Is that just a rubber mount? Oh, yeah, it's just a rubber mount. I guess it's to help isolate the pump so it doesn't vibrate as bad. It's just a, yeah, a compliant mount. main power switch, of course the uh, trigger for the vacuum motor, temperature adjustment. It looks very well made inside. I've never seen inside of one of these before. I guess I probably should have looked at some video, but I didn't. Uh, so with all of that, let's just put the top back on, or this half of the cover back on. Take one of the mounting screws to sh just to secure it. These are self tappers. Remember, with self tappers, turn it backwards till you feel it fall. Did you hear that click? That click is that screw falling down into the original threads that were cut. And this way, I'm reusing those threads. I'm not cutting new threads. So that'll keep that part together. I will order myself a heating element and hopefully that'll fix it. I've actually had need for this just here today uh, and didn't have it. So yeah I'd say that's a complete failure. I don't know if you can see it or not. Th this has still got the bonding material on the lead these three don't, and my guess is, is that fractured off of right here. I can see where it's broke off. And when that fractured off, the heating element quit working. That would have been mounted on like that. Uh, why the other wires failed the way they did, I don't know. I'll wrap this one up and I will see you in a replacement video that'll be upcoming. See you then.